Hello and welcome to today's lecture on past transistor logic circuits. This is the second lecture on this topic. In the last lecture, we have introduced to you the basic concepts of past transistor logic and discuss the advantages of past transistor logic circuits and also the limitations. And we also discussed how the limitations can be overcome with the help of some additional hardware. Today, we shall start our discussion from the point uh, where we left in the last lecture. So, uh, here is the agenda of today's lecture. I shall discuss about a very important concept known as Shannon expansion theorem and we shall see how this uh, expansion theorem can be used in realizing the uh, past transistor uh, network. And then I shall introduce to you a number of uh, members of the past transistor logic family. First one is uh, complementary past transistor logic CPL, swing restored past transistor logic SRPL, double past transistor logic DPL, uh, then LEAP which is a single rail past transistor logic, then differential cascode voltage switch with past transistor logic, logic uh, DC VSPG and finally, I shall uh, discuss about the logic synthesis by using past transistor. So, uh, let me start with Shannon expansion theorem. Uh, what is Shannon expansion theorem? A function, say function f uh, is a function of say x 1, x 2, x n. So, it is a n variable function which is a function of n variables. This can be expanded around a variable x i uh, and it can be represented as x i f x i plus x i bar f x i bar. So, this is known as Shannon expansion, Shannon expansion theory. So, this x i dot f x i and x i bar dot f x i. What is f x i? f x i and f x i bar, uh, these are essentially reduced functions. That means, if you expand around x i, you will get f x i which is independent of x i and that part of the function for which uh, it is true for x i. Similarly, f x i bar is also independent of uh, x i. However, this part of the function is true when x i bar is uh, 1. So, this is how uh, it can be extended. I believe I can illustrate with the help of an example. Say, suppose f is equal to a plus b c. Now, we can expand it around any one of the three variables. Uh, uh, let me expand around a. So, this can be represented as a dot 1 because you can see a dot 1 and the f x i is 1 here plus a bar dot uh, b c. Now, uh, this is the reduced function that means, uh, this part of the function when a bar is equal to 1. Uh, only this part is true. Similarly, when a is equal to 1, only this part is true and of course, uh, it is 1, uh, 1 plus b c, but uh, you know 1 plus b c uh, becomes 1. Now, this part can again be expanded around b c. So, uh, one of the two variables. So, th this can be represented as a dot 1 plus a bar. Let me expand around uh, another variable say b. So, we can represent it as I mean b dot 0 because uh, the reduced function uh, f, f x b is 0 plus b dash uh, c a dot b c. So, b dot 0 b c it will be equal to oh sorry it will be 1 and this will be 0, b dot 0, b dot c, b dot c and b dash bar 0, it will be b, b dot c and b dash bar 0. 
because uh, you know it is 1 for when it b is equal to 1 this turns out to be c and when b for b dash bar this part is 0. <coughs> okay. So, this is how uh, it can be expanded. Now, after this expansion is done we can actually map it to past transistor logic. So, this part is logic independent I mean the independent of uh, how it is being realized. Now, this part uh, after the expansion is done this can be used to realize the circuit using past transistor logic. For example, uh, we start with expansion with A. So, here we apply A this part. So, and this is 1 and then if we expand around A bar we have got two components uh, and uh, that this is being expanded around B. So, it will be equal to B and then this is C and when is expanded around B bar it is 0. So, this is the realization of um, this is the realization of the uh, of the uh, past transistor logic. Earlier we uh, re obtained the realization of this by using uh, multiplexer there we have seen it can be used to realize this this function can be realized using uh, multiplexer however whenever we use multiplexer to realize a function you require more number of transistors for example this particular realization of this f will require uh, how many uh, how many transistors there will be four inputs if we expand around a and b and this is the output a. So, it inside it will require 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 transistors will be required inside it and here of course, you have to apply uh, the, the other the various components after expanding around a, 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 b, uh, a and b. That means, uh, from the truth table we can find out that here it will be you will be applying z 0, z 1, z 2 and z 3. So, Instead, instead of uh, re, uh, requiring 8 transistors inside this past transistor network, you require only 1, 2, 3, 4. So, instead of 8 transistors, you require 4 transistors. So, this is how you can carry out expansion of a function and then map it to the past transistor uh, network. Past transistor network means NMOS transistors. So, this is how it can be done. Uh, okay. Now, uh, let, let me illustrate with the help of another example. Suppose a is equal to a bar b plus a b bar, typical I mean this is the exclusive or function exclusive or b. Now, uh, this can be expanded around a, so it will be a b bar it is already in expanded form and a dash b. So, what will be the past transistor network based on this? it will be uh, here you will require A and B bar, A bar and B. So, this is how only by using two transistors this realizes F, this F, this particular F which is exclusive or function just you require two transistors. On the other hand if you perform uh, you know if you realize by using multiplexer you will require more number of transistors. So, uh, this is the uh, this is the advantage of this uh, Shannon expansion theorem that means using Shannon expansion theorem you can get a pass transistor network which will require minimum number of transistors. Of course, later on we shall see this ordering of variable here for example, we have first expanded around A then expanded around B. Uh, so, if you have got n variables you can expand around any one of the variable then another uh, uh, one from the remaining variables and so on. This ordering has an important role in the expansion particularly the, uh, the uh, expanded form will be heavily dependent on the ordering and uh, then it has been found that getting an optimal solution after expansion is a NP complete pro problem. That means, which particular ordering you will give you a minimum uh, number of transistors that is an NP complete problem. 
However, there are some heuristic based techniques by which uh, the expansion can be done and a good ordering can be made such that you can get uh, transistors with, uh, you can realize with minimum number of transistors. Okay. So, this is Shannon, Shannon expansion theorem, later on we shall be using this in our, uh, in our uh, future circuits. Now, uh, I shall introduce to you the fast transistor logic family. <coughs> Obviously, the fast transistor logic family has been, uh, uh, I mean has, has been provided, uh, has been, uh, has emerged such that it overcomes the various limitations of past transistor logic circuits. We, we know that there are a number of inherent limitations of past transistor logic. These inherent limitations are overcome uh, with the help of uh, this uh, logic family and I shall introduce to you various members of this family. What are the limitations that you have to overcome? First, first uh, uh, limitation is insertion of buffers to avoid long delay of a chain of past transistors. As you know, as the number of transistors increases in series, the delay increases more or less quadratically at the rate of n square. And as a consequence after when the number of uh, past transistor stage or number of past transistors in series is large, say 8 or 10 or 15, then delay can be uh, unacceptable. So, in such a situation you can put buffers as we have discussed in the last lecture. So, uh, all the family members uh, so will include a buffer at the output uh, and such that the uh, long delay can be avoided. Second limitation was you know that there is some multi threshold voltage drop at the output. So, you have to use some swing restoration circuit to overcome multi threshold voltage drop. As we know whenever the signal passes through a pass single, uh, single or multiple pass transistor even if you apply VDD here you will uh, and the uh, gate voltage is VDD you will get VDD minus VTN and if this is applied to one gate logic say an inverter then what will happen it will not only get lesser drive but this voltage may be such that both the transistors are on. So, it will lead to what is known as short circuit, short circuit power dissipation. So, to avoid this short circuit power dissipation and lesser drive, it is necessary to restore the uh, output uh, to, to the to VDD level and that is done with the help of swing restoration logic and I have introduced to you the type of circuit you require to restore the uh, voltage level with the help of swing restoration logic. Third limitation that we encountered uh, is the problem of snake path. As you know, whenever uh, the output gets a path to 1 as well as 0 simultaneously, this leads to what is known as snake path. Actually, snake path can be avoided by proper design of the pass transistor network. And we have already discussed about the past ten, realization of past transistor, net, uh, past transistor network using, uh, using Shannon expansion. And whenever you realize the past transistor network using Shannon expansion uh, theorem, you will find this kind of snake path cannot exist. So, snake path is, can be avoided by using uh, proper design uh, using uh, particularly using Shannon expansion theorem. And later on we shall discuss about another technique use of binary decision diagram BDD which can also be used to realize bus transistor network and that will also avoid snake path. <coughs> Fourth problem as we know that the, uh, the it requires both uh, X and X bar, I mean both the complementary and uh, uncomplementary inputs are uh, required as input. That is the reason why the past transistor logic circuits are inherent uh, are uh, inherently dual rail, dual rail in the sense that means you will realize the circuit in such a way it will produce not only F but also F bar. You will apply input, primary input, and it will produce F and F bar. So this is known as dual rail. So dual rail is necessary so that you can feed 
both uh, X, A, 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 F and F bar, which is necessary. As we know, for example, if, whenever you are realizing this type of circuit, you require A and A bar, B and B bar. Similarly, the latter part of the circuit will require F and F bar. That is the reason why you have to realize both an F, F, F and F bar, such that the pass transistor uh, network can be driven by, uh, uh, by, the, by these two signals. Okay. So, th these are the uh, features which will be included as part of your uh, pass transistor logic circuits. So, let me introduce the first family member that is your complementary pass transistor logic CPL. So, CPL or complementary pass transistor logic CPL as the as its name suggests. Uh, complementary. Complementary means it has got uh, both uh, both the outputs, complementary outputs. That means F and F bar. That means it is dual rail. So, what is being done? Uh, two networks are used. One is your one for realizing F, another for realizing F bar. So, it will have a one first transistor network and you will require two pass transistor network to realize the complementary function. So, another pass transistor network, another pass transistor network to realize F and F bar. So, you will apply inputs to both to both of them and uh, from the you will get F and F bar. However, in addition to this, uh, it will insert buffer in the form of inverters. So, inverting buffers are provided at the output. In addition to that, two weak PMOS transistors are used. This is connected to VDD. Here also another weak PMOS transistor is there. This is connected to VDD. And instead of grounding them, this is connected to the to this point. As we know, this is the complementary uh, output of this one. So that is the reason why, instead of uh, connecting from inverter output, it it is connected from here. Similarly, this is this is connected to this. So this is the generalized structure of a uh, complementary pass transistor logic. Uh, uh, circuit, which is one of the mem uh, first one of the members of the uh, pass transistor logic. So here you realize F, and here you realize F bar. Let us consider the realization of uh, some uh, real functions. Say suppose you have to realize uh, and 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 NAND. How do you realize this pass transistor network? Since A and B, you see uh, this is an AND function, uh, AND function, this is an uh, NAND function. So, you can again use the uh, Shannon expansion theorem here. So, A B can be represented as A dot B plus A bar B, A bar sorry it will be A bar 0 or if you expand around B, it is not necessary that you have to always expand around A. If you expand around B, then it will be B A plus B bar 0. Now, instead of applying 0 here, what you can do? Sometimes we, we uh, instead of applying a constant, we apply some variable. So, you can put A B here. As you know, when B bar is 1, B will be 0. So, this will realize the same thing. So, based on this, you can realize the network of uh, this, um, this pass transistor logic similarly for, uh, for this complementary function. One particular uh, property of this pass transistor logic is that uh, you can see, so suppose you expand around B. So, it is B A plus let us assume B bar B. This is how you realize uh, A B. Now, without doing any expansion, 
a bar b that is NAND function can be obtained simply by putting these inputs in a complemented form. That means, that b a bar plus b bar b bar will realize this complementary function, because uh, you will see that this realizes the complementary function. So, you do not have to do expansion, only thing that you have to do these inputs, those, uh, those inputs which you apply to the uh, past tense logic, uh, they have to be complemented, then it will realize the uh, complementary function as we shall see in the realizations. Now, with this let me, uh, let us realize the uh, NAND and NOR functions for the, the CPL version of NAND and NOR. So, you will require two transistors. Uh, for for realizing the complementary and uncomplementary uh, this this uh, these functions so you require you will require uh, if you expand around b a and a and b they will be the inputs so a whenever it is b and v bar b and similarly here b and v bar so, you have to apply the complement of this. So, it will be A bar and here will be V bar and then this will go to as we as we know it will go to an inverter, this will go to an another inverter and here you will require two uh, PMOS transistors for swing restoration, another PMOS transistor that will be connected, gate will be connected there, this will be connected to VDD and this will be connected here. So, this realizes uh, as we know this is uh, this is the output of AND and so it will be NAND here A dot B bar and here it will require A dot B. Here it is uh, NAND, so it will be AND here. So, this is how you can realize NAND and AND with the help of this CPL. Now, uh, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this? We have seen that uh, in this uh, CPL logic, inverting buffers perform restoration of logic levels at the output. So, we have inverting buffers at the output and inverting buffers allow driving large capacitive loads and PMOS latch, you see since they are connected back to back this output is connected as uh, to the base uh, to the gate of this transistor, this output is connected to the gate of this transistor, they form a kind of latch. So, the, these two PMOS transistors perform swing restoration. In this particular case, one, uh, one aspect you have to remember, the PMOS devices should be properly sized, so that the circuit can function correctly. You see the sizing of the PMOS transistors is important, because they will decide how quickly the switching will take place and also what kind of power dissipation that will occur. And uh, of course, in this particular in the steady state, uh, it will not affect the output, because uh, since it is acting as a kind of latch, uh, the output voltage levels will be always 0 and VDD uh, in both the for both the outputs. So, here it will be VDD and 0 depending on high and low and here also VDD and 0 depending on high or low. However, proper sizing of these fast transistors is necessary to avoid unnecessary power dissipation and delay. Okay. And uh, using the same concept, we can realize different types of gates by using this CPL technique. Uh, you can see here OR and NOR has been realized and in the same way you can realize the fast transistor network and here uh, we have realized the XOR and XNOR uh, again by uh, realizing the PMO, the past transistor network using Shannon expansion theorem. <coughs> so, this is how you can realize different uh, gates with the help of CPL technique. Now, coming to the second family member swing restored past transistor logic. So, in swing restored past transistor logic, so, this is SRPL swing restored past transistor logic. 
in swing stored past tense the logic what is done again two past tense turn network is used like the previous case. So, you have past tense turn network. bus transistor network and you will require two bus transistor network. It may be noted that the number of transistors required in each network will be same, only difference will be uh, the inputs will be uh, <coughs> different that means complementary of the other that means number will remain same. And here these outputs uh, the, uh, the buffers are not provided at the output, but they are connected in this form back to back. The inverters are connected back to back. So, uh, here you will apply the primary inputs in the same manner, in the same way we will apply the primary inputs here and the outputs will be taken from uh, these two points. So, it will be f and this will be f bar. It is so in this case we are finding that two inverters are connected back to back. How it really performs various functions like uh, you know number one uh, it is dual role, dual rail that we have seen because we are realizing f and f bar. Now how it is performing the role of swing restoration? how the swing restoration is done. We can see here this inverters, uh, I can expand one of the two inverters. As we know, this is the static CMOS inverter. So, you will have a PMOS transistor and a NMOS transistor and this is actually equivalent to this inverter. This is connected to ground, this is connected to VDD. Now, let us assume this particular uh, this particular uh, inverter is this one. Now, base is connected here and output is connected here. So, base is connected here and output is connected here. Now, you see this particular PMOS transistor will act as swing restoration of this one. How? So, let us assume this is 0. So, this is 0 means this output is supposed to be 1 and so since this is 0 this transistor will be on and this will provide the this will restore the logic level to VDD. So, uh, the swing restoration is done by the PMOS transistor of this inverter for this particular output. Similarly, the swing restoration for this output is done by the PMOS transistor of this uh, particular inverter. So, we see that uh, swing restoration is done with the help of the two PMOS transistors of the two inverters. We do not require any additional transistors for that. Third requirement as we know, we have to insert buffer. Here you know uh, for this output, uh, this inverter is acting as a buffer. We can see it is driving. So, you can drive uh, large capacitive load. Similarly, for this output, uh, this is acting as a buffer, this inverter is acting as a buffer. So, we find that the uh, two inverters performing dual role. The dual role is uh, first of all, they are doing the swing restoration, they are also doing the, they are, uh, perf they are also performing the role of buffer. That means, buffer means whenever you have to drive large capacitive load some buffer is required that will reduce the delay as we know buffer insertion is necessary to reduce delay. So, they will help to reduce the delay as well as they will perform the swing restoration. However, uh, you are duplicating the past transistor network to get dual rail output. So, uh, here is the uh, here one NAND and NON version of the uh, SRPL circuitry is shown here. It is not different from uh, the other uh, logic family, this uh, NMOS uh, network that past transistor network is identical except uh, I mean only difference is the uh, output part, driver part. So, we see we have got two inverters connected back to back 
and uh, we are getting a dot b bar and a b. Now, you may be asking uh, is there any basic difference between this and the uh, that C p l in what way it differs? In case of C p l the inverter was provided at the output, but here inverter is not provided at the output. That means, the pass transistor logic was not driving the output in case of CPL as you can see. So, CPL pass transistor logic is driving the uh, inverter and inverter output is driving the output. But in this particular case, uh, you can see the directly the pass transistor logic is driving. Of course, that inverter is there uh, which is acting as swing restoration logic and it will definitely give some drive because opposite polarity input is available here. Now, what is the uh, outcome of this? Outcome is that you can see this B is as if B is transmitted through this network to the output. So, isolation is less here. Uh, in case of uh, CPL, inputs are applied to the gate and you know to the uh, uh, to the uh, you know uh, to the input of the pass transistor logic it is usually source or drain because they are interchangeable and uh, like gate logic we are taking the output from the output of an inverter but here you are directly taking from the output of the pass transistor network so here uh, we can say that uh, I less isolation that means Whenever isolation is less, uh, the the input signal will noise and disturbances of the input will pass to the output. It will not be, it cannot be suppressed by the inverter uh, driver. So isolation is less in this particular case. Now, uh, and here also sizing is critical for speed and power dissipation issues. Uh, the sizing of the transistors of these uh, the, these inverters is critical. You have to uh, uh, choose proper width <coughs> of these transistors such that uh, the uh, power dissipation is not high and speed of operation is not much affected. It will definitely affect to some extent, but you have to size it them properly so that uh, necessary speed and power dissipation is achieved. Okay. Coming to the third family member, which is known as double pass transistor logic DPL. In case of DPL, uh, again you are using dual pass transistor logic DPL, you are using both uh, NMOS and PMOS transistors. Earlier we have seen, so far as the pass transistor logic is concerned, you are using only NMOS transistors. But in case of DPL, you will see both NMOS and PMOS transistors are used. Norm typically, the NMOS transistors are used to, uh, to uh, provide a path to the ground. On the other hand, as you know, PMOS transistors are used to provide a path to VDD. The reason for that is NMOS transistors, you know, is not a, uh, does not pass uh, high level signal properly. Similarly, PMOS transistor does not pass low level signal properly. So, here the same concept has been used, uh, but uh, the configuration is uh, different from uh, the static CMOS. We are using PMOS in the pull up network and NMOS transistors in the pull down network, but not the way it is done in case of static CMOS, it is different. Here they are connected like pass transistors as you can see. So, here a B. So, A B you know uh, A B can be realized by, uh, by this network. So, let me explain. <coughs> Say A, A dot B here uh, they can be represented by A dot or B dot. So, this is this is how you can realize the uh, pull down network that means you can see you can realize A dot, B dot 
and this is connected to ground. That means, when any of them uh, is 1, that means, a bar is equal to a bar is uh, a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. As you know, in case of uh, NAND gate, if any of them is 0, output will be connected to uh, output will be 0. And uh, <coughs> that means, if any of the input is 0, this will be 1. So, this will be connected to 0. Uh, so, this is this will realize the a dot b bar land function and what about the PMOS network? PMOS network is realized in this way. Here uh, b bar similar in a similar way you are using b bar and a bar these two are connected. However, here you will be putting a and b and this will realize the a bar b function. In a similar way, you can realize the uh, the, uh, the complementary functions. This is the NAND and NOR function and sorry, this is the NAND and AND function you can realize in this manner. And in this case, this is connected to VDD and this is connected to uh, this is your A, B and this is A bar, uh, B bar and this is connected to A, B, A, B, A is connected to uh, these are connected to VDD and here you are realizing A dot B. So, when both of them are 1, then output will be 1, both of them are 1 means B is equal to 1. Uh, b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 1, I mean a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, both of them are 1, uh, then output will be 1, no, no this is I think I think this is NAND, this will be AND, this is AND, this is NAND, I had drawn it wrongly. <coughs> okay. So, this is how uh, you can realize AND and NAND functions by using a DPL. So, the uh, DPL is modified version of CPL. In case of CPL, we have seen uh, two past install logics are used, but uh, here uh, you are replacing this part and this uh, you are replacing the uh, past install logic part by using PMOS transistors. And both NMOS and PMOS logic networks are used together as this provides full swing on the output, no extra transistors are required for swing restoration. So, you can see since uh, PMOS, NMOS transistors are used for, uh, for making it 0 and similarly, these transistors are used to make the output 1, you will always get uh, good logic level outputs. So, there is no need for any swing restoration logic. Uh, at the output. Uh, here also we do not require any swing restoration logic. And another very important feature is that it has balanced input capacitance. You see number of transistors that is connected uh, here for example, A, uh, A here uh, 1, here also A is 1, A bar is 1 here, A bar is 1 here. That means, both the uh, inverting and non-inverting part will require same number of transistors. As a result, the capacitance is balanced for the uh, for the two uh, two different networks, and this will give you uh, switching characteristic, ideal switching characteristics both both the outputs. So, switching characteristics uh, will be identical because of the balance input capacitance of this double pass transistor logic. Okay, this is the third member DPL. Now, let us consider the fourth member LEAP. So, LEAP actually stands for lean pass transistor logic. Uh, the reason for that is it is called lean, it is thinner because uh, you will be using single rail logic uh, in contrast to uh, dual rail logic that is used for other pass transistor members, logic family members. Here, uh, you will see that uh, the 
any circuit is realized with the help of three cells. These are known as Y1 cell, Y2 cell and Y3 cell. So, there are three cells uh, lip, lean, first transistor logic. So, leaf has come from this L E A N, L E A P, lean pass transistor logic because number of transistors required is smaller because it is not dual rail. Now, three cells are there, one is known as Y1, second one is known as Y2, third one is known as Y3. Actually, if you look closely, you will find that this Y1 is nothing but a 2 to 1 multiplexer. So, here you apply C, C bar and two inputs are available A, B and here of course, you will provide some buffer at the output, uh, we shall see what kind of buffer is that. So, this is nothing but a 2 to 1 multiplexer, we have got two inputs and C is the control input and you have got a buffer circuit at the out, inverting buffer at the output. So, this will also do swing restoration as we shall see. So, Y1 is nothing but a 2 to 1 MUX multiplexer. Similarly, this uh, Y2 is essentially a 3 to 1 multiplexer. So, it has got 2 to 1 and another transistor is there. again this is connected to that buffer inverter. So, here you have got three inputs A, B and C and D, D bar, E, E bar. So, D and D are control signals and these three are inputs and, and there is buffer at the output. So, this is nothing but 3 to 1 max. <coughs> So, in a similar ma manner Y 3 can be realized is, which is essentially a, a 4 to 1 max. So, you have got uh, A B A B C D sorry C and D and here we will apply A B C D E E bar F a bar, these are tied together, then this is connected to E F G, there will be a, uh, E F G and A B C D E, oh here actually E and E bar, here also you use E and E bar and F and F bar connected here, F bar and buffer is there. So, this is nothing but a 4 to 1 max. And then the swing as it is shown here, uh, the same circuits y 1, y 2 and y 3 cells, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1 multiplexers and here is the buffer. Buffer as it is shown is nothing but an inverter and a weak PMOS transistor for swing restoration. So, this perf performs the dual role of providing buffer uh, as well as swing restoration logic. So, this kind of buffer is provided at the output each of these cells. Now, any circuit can be realized in terms of these uh, cells Y1, Y2 and Y3 cells and in the number of uh, cells required is only 3. So, this is the fourth member of the logic family. Coming to the last member of the logic family which is differential cascode voltage switch with pass gate logic, DC VSPG. Here uh, two PMOS transistors are connected back to back in the form of a latch, then you have got two pass transistor logic, same kind of pass transistor logic. So, here this one is AND, at the output you will get AND and at the here at the output you will get NAND. So, pass transistor logic realization can be done in the same way and only difference is that instead of inverter you have got two PMOS transistors which are connected back to back and name 
uh, is differential cascode voltage switch with pass gate logic. So, and as you as you can see, it is, it has got dual rail, two outputs. The PMOS latch performs swing restoration. So these two transistors are also doing swing restoration. And however, isolation is less here because pass transistor logic is directly driving the outputs. So there will be less isolation. But let us quickly compare the various logic families. Here, as you can see, uh, we have five members of the logic family compared with static CMOS. The number of transistors that is required is shown here. CPL, as you know, CMOS required two N transistors. If N is the number of inputs, number of variables, CPL will require two N plus six because inverter and uh, and the weak PMOS transistor 3 plus 3, 6. SRPL will require 2 N plus 4 because you do not require the weak PMOS transistors, but only two inverters are required at the output. So, 2 N plus 4. DPL requires 4 N. You do not require neither inverter nor swing restoration PMOS transistor, but uh, you require uh, 2 N for each network. So, you require 4 N transistor to require a dual rail circuit. Leap requires n plus 3 because uh, the n is the number of inputs plus 3 which is essentially the driver and swing restoration logic and DC VSPG requires 2 n plus 2 transistors. So, output driving capability as you can see it is uh, medium to good for CMOS. It is good for C, uh, CPL because you have got uh, explicit inverters at the output. So, you get good output driving capability, but it is poor for SRPL as we have seen the in case of SRPL, uh, the, the pass transistors are di directly connected to the output. Similarly, for DPL it is good, for lean, uh, leap it is also good, you have got uh, PMOS uh, the inverters at the output. For DCVS PG it is again medium, the reason for that is uh, here also pass transistors are directly connected to the output. So far as I O coupling is concerned, there is no I O coupling in SRPL, I mean uh, I, I O decoupling, there is I O decoupling that means inputs are, uh, inputs are not, pass transistors are not directly connected to the output. This is directly connected to the output for SRPL, uh, but no, not in other cases. I think in case of DC, DCVSPG also the, uh, it is connected uh, to the di directly to the output, here also it is directly connected. So, uh, but you have got PMOS transistors connected that is why uh, uh, in this case also I O D coupling will not be good. So, here it will be no. Then swing restoration logic you do not require in case of uh, static CMOS and you also do not require for DPL and DC VSPG, but you require explicit uh, swing restoration logic for CPL, SRPL and LEAP uh, logic family members and except static CMOS and LEAP all are dual rail as we have seen and so far as robustness is concerned, static CMOS is very robust, uh, DPL is also very robust, but others are uh, not as robust as static CMOS and, and uh, DPL, others are moderately or uh, low robust. So, this is how this is, this is a relative comparison of the past transistor logic families. Okay. Now, we are now uh, the uh, past transistor logic family is now known to us. Question is how we shall realize logic circuits using these past transistor logic family. Actually, the logic synthesis step has got uh, two steps. First, or you can say there are two phases. In the first phase, you do technology independent optimization phase. And one commonly used technique is get ROBDD of a given Boolean function. ROBDD stands for ROBDD stands for reduced ordered binary decision diagram BDD. This and uh, actually this uh, the technique that we discuss Hanon expansion technique that is also a a logic independent optimization technique. There we have seen we are doing an expansion and we are getting a network. 
that is also a logic independent optimization technique. And second technique, second phase is map the BDD nodes onto the PTL cell. So, these are the two phases. So, it is like this you get a BDD and in the next phase you do the mapping on the pass transistor logic tree. Now, the pass transistor logic tree can be mapped depending on which particular logic family you are using. You can use CPL, you can use DPL, you can use LEAP, you can use SRPL. So, that part uh, is logic dependent. On the other hand, the BDD part is logic independent. Let us discuss how you can get a ROBDD construction. Uh, this ROBDD is a canonical representation of a Boolean function. That means, what do you mean by canonical representation? Canonical representation is unique. For a given function, it will be unique. That is why it is called canonical representation and it is a convenient data structure for Boolean logic representation and manipulation. And that is the reason why BDD is widely used for synthesis, verification of functions. So, uh, BDD plays a very important role in logic synthesis and verification. Let us discuss how BDD can be obtained. So, uh, for this particular function f is equal to a c plus b c, uh, if from the truth table you can uh, you can construct a decision tree. Decision tree, you know, uh, you can choose take one variable, say a. We have started with variable a. Then it has got one edge and zero edge. One edge is for which the reduced function, for which the reduced, for which a is one. And here, uh, this part will be essentially the reduced function for which a is zero. That means essentially, essentially we are doing kind of Shannon expansion here. So this is the uh, uh, F A and this is F A bar. So, in this way if you do the expansion you will get a tree like this and at the leaf node you will get zeros and ones essentially uh, it can you can take it from the truth table. So, 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 so I have put them there. Now, you can uh, this is the decision tree. Now, you have to do uh, kind of uh, uh, optimization or reduction. First thing that is being done, all these zeros are combined and all these ones are combined to, to have only two leaf nodes, one, one for 0, another for 1. So, that is what is being done uh, by removing duplicate terminals. So, here duplicate terminals are uh, reduced, uh, removed from the output. Then here again uh, you can see here C we have removed where they are identical. For example, in this particular case B uh, whenever it is coming this is this, this C you can see B dot C this is the, the, the it is coming to 0, B C it is also coming to 0. So, they are combined here B C and uh, here you have got only 2 C's and uh, this is how we have removed the number of uh, nodes for C. So, only two nodes are required for C and uh, finally, uh, we shall <coughs> remove the uh, redundant nodes. For example, this C is not required even for 0 as well as 1 it is connected to 0 obviously, this is redundant. Similarly, this B is redundant because both it is connected for 0 as well as for 1. So, uh, this is also removed. So, both of them are removed and getting a redundant uh, remo I mean remove the um, after removing the redundant nodes we get a uh, final tree and this is actually the reduced ordered B R BDD. Reduced or why it is reduced order BDD? I we have removed unnecessary nodes and edges only necessary nodes and edges are present and this is only for a particular ordering A, B and C. If you take different ordering, say start with B, then A, then C, this, this particular tree will be different. And after this is done, you can do the mapping. So, this BDD is ROBDD is obtained, then you will do the mapping to the pass transistor logic tree. Here the mapping has been done, each of the node is mapped to a 2 to 1 multiplexer. So, here you have used a 2 to 1 multiplexer for this node where the control signal is A this B has been again replaced by a 2 to 1 multiplexer 
and C has been now replaced by another 2 to 1 multiplexer and they are coming to 0 and 1. So, you can see there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between in this ROBDD and this pass, pass transistor tree. Each node has been replaced by a 2, uh, 2 to 1 multiplexer. So, this is how you can realize the function. Let me illustrate with another example, the example of full adder. You can see here uh, you can perform Shannon expansion or you can get ROBDD uh, for sum and carry functions and after getting the pass transistor, uh, getting the uh, BDD or Shannon expansion, you can map it to uh, the one of the logic families. Here we have mapped it to uh, that uh, leaf, leaf cells. So, here you can see this is the Y3 cell, Y3 cell is nothing but a 4 to 1 multiplexer. So, the carry and sum both can be realized by using a, uh, using each by each, each for each you require one uh, Y3 cell that is your, uh, I mean one cell for each of them. So, this is the realization of each adder and you can see the number of transistors required is significantly less. So, we can realize uh, very easily in this particular case. So, with this we have come to the end of today's lecture. So, we have introduced to you various members of the past transistor logic family and we have also discussed quickly uh, the logic synthesis technique that you can do uh, for uh, past transistor logic circuit, logic circuit realization and illustrated with the help of an example of full adder. Thank you. <laughs>